That's it, Marquis. That's it. Okay. Spend a few minutes with Marquise Walker, a basketball-loving eight-year-old from the west side of Chicago, and you can't help but fall in love. Remember what I said? Remember what I said? I'm going to dribble, you know, that stuff, say Marquise Walker, whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, but no, you can't say whatever. Marquise Walker from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm eight years old. Okay. Oh, hello. My name is Marquise Walker. I'm, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I'm eight years old. Make it? <laughs> it is within the red walls of this YMCA gym where Marquise and the boy's father, Chikozi Walker, are happiest. Here, life is nothing more than the two of them, a round basketball and a pair of hoops. Through basketball, I think we have a, we have a bond because that's something that just me and him do together. But the game is more than a way to bring father and son together. It is the center of a calculated, internet-driven marketing plan that Walker hopes will someday send his son to college. The dream started at the age of two, when one day Marquis started dribbling a kickball. And I would just have him bounce it and say one, two, three as he bounced it with each hand. Um, after a couple of weeks, I couldn't count no more. And at that point, I realized that I might have something special on my hands. A few years later, Walker met Lamont Peterson, a Philadelphia-based basketball trainer who has worked with top prospects Mustafa Shakur, Wayne Ellington, and Tyreek Evans. Walker told Peterson that his son, a kindergartner, was the next big thing. He asked Peterson how he could get Marquis some national exposure. The trainer's response? YouTube. Seconds. So just, yeah, there you go. Perfectly still. We uh, basically we try to develop a blueprint. You know, how can you make him accessible to everybody? He said, no one will look at it if you just say, this is my son, look at him. But he said, everybody wants to see who number one is. Everybody. You have to look when they say number one. And that was his whole idea. And he said, you put him out there, you say number one, and you put his best stuff out. And that's what I did. I called him the player the scouts have dubbed the top kindergarten prospect in the country. But who's going to have the audacity to say the top kindergarten in the country? Who would even believe it? But again, your credibility is your proof. Where's your proof? Because I'm a side, because I'm standing next to LeBron. And Lamont said, what you want to do is put them in a video with these guys. And you want them to create an intimate feel. You have them put their arm around him. You have them shake his hand. You have them say his name. Marquis. Marquis. This is my little buddy right here, y'all. Using his friendship with NBA guard Jamal Tinsley, Chikozi began seeking out college and NBA stars to validate the hype he and Peterson had created. LeBron would be the big get. You know, you've got, if you have access to the arena, Get down in the tunnel, figure out how you can get in the tunnel, get a pass. If you put Marquise in front of LeBron, LeBron's not going to reject him. He called me one day, he said, I did. I said, what'd you do? He said, I got footage. Footage of what? LeBron and Marquise. I said, get out of here. He said, I did. I did just what you said. I got it. You know, so now Marquise is credible. Why? Because if you click on his name, you'll see Marquise with a who's who of guys from high school, college, and pros. They say, wow. This guy is everywhere. Everybody knows who he is. And your perception becomes, your, becomes the reality. The kid barely knew what hit him. This is my boy. This is my boy. Oh, no, 
Tell me about some of the people you've met, some of the celebrities and some of the basketball players that you've been able to meet. Who have Jamal you met? Jamal Tinsley, Jermaine O'Neal, Ben, Ben, I forgot, Ben Gordon, Ben Gordon, who else? LeBron James. Was he nice? He real nice, but he had to go real quick. He had to go. The blueprint worked. Marquise performed at halftime of Memphis Grizzlies and Chicago Sky games. There were calls from the Ellen DeGeneres and Jay Leno shows. The fever even reached his Aaronis himself. Here we are in the city of Chicago, and Michael Jordan's son tells me that Michael Jordan himself has seen Marquise play. And when he told me that, my jaw just dropped. So now what we've done by introducing him to a national audience as a kindergartner, I can tell you there's at least five college coaches that know who that kid is. I think it's afforded us the opportunity to maybe walk into some gyms we might never be able to walk into. We get to go down to Memphis, Tennessee. And you know, um, Illinois. We've been to Illinois, we've been to Ole Miss, we're going to Memphis. So we've been able to go some places that um, we might not have actually ever went if basketball hadn't taken us there. But not everyone thinks the experiment is a good one. In 1986, Sports Illustrated tabbed Mike Irvin, the top 11-year-old in the country. He spent the rest of his childhood struggling to live up to that hype. He worries what this will do to Marquise. Being A with that much attention, I mean, you know, that's something he might want for his kid, but if I, if, if I had a kid, and after what I went through, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Those are realistic questions and concerns to have, but I would, I would honestly, I would rather him have to deal with the pressure of playing ball well than the pressure of not having a life, not, not having an opportunity to be somebody. 